We have talked to experts and former law enforcement about tracking down fugitives and what the hunt for Brian Laundry might look like tonight. We've got a new perspective, life on the run from federal authorities, from someone who lived it. Seth Ferranti was once on the U.S. Marshals' top 15 most wanted list for federal drug trafficking. He evaded authorities for two years before he was discovered, even faking his own death. Seth served more than two decades in prison, and now he is a free man, and he's also become a writer and a producer. And Seth is joining us tonight live. Seth, great to see you. Uh, you were on the run, as I said, for two years. You were captured. What were some of the challenges you faced as a fugitive as we watch authorities look for Brian Laundrie tonight? I would say the most important thing at first, it was um, just the, the mental burden because, you know, when, when you have to, like, leave your whole life, you have to, like, leave your identity. You have to become someone else and go into isolation and go into hiding. It's, it's a really big mental burden. So that, that was the first thing I had to overcome, you know. And then the paranoia, you know, with the first couple months when I was on the run, the first two, three months, like, I was always looking over my shoulder. You know, it was like some cloak and, cloak and dagger, Mission Impossible type stuff. You know, and then the third biggest thing, you know, was establishing a legitimate ID. Because, you know, even back then when I was on the run in the early 90s, I mean, you needed ID. And even now, you know, you need it more so. Does it get easier the longer you're on the run to figure things out, the way of life? Yeah, after about six months, you know, once I had established some alternate identities, you know, and I, I, I kind of, you know, eased up because, you know, you, you kind of realize that, you know, maybe there's not any Sherlock Holmes on the force that are, are tracking, you know, your every movement and, and know where you are, you know. They're, you know, the, the cops and law enforcement, I mean, I mean, they're human. They're just looking for that break. You know, they don't have any type of supernatural powers. So, you know, but once they get that break, I mean, they're going to be coming like the cavalry. Were there times when you were on the run that you thought or you sensed that they were getting close to you and you would make a move? Yeah, not, not until the end. I mean, r right at the end, like at that two-year point, um, I had actually got arrested, so, so they printed me, so they knew it was me, and then I got back out, and it was like about a week or so, and I, I could feel the heat then, you know, even though, you know, I didn't see them, I, I could feel like the walls were closing in, and I'm sure like right now, with the scrutiny of this case, I'm sure that's how Brian has to feel, man. I'm sure he can feel the walls closing in on him every day because, you know, even even the early 90s, I was top 15 U.S. Marshals list, but I didn't have a tenth of the media attention or a tenth of the scrutiny that Brian has on him right now. Because, I mean, this is like all the nation is talking about. Right. No, I, I, and th that makes you wonder if he's hiding in plain sight right now. I mean, we watched this search in the reserve happening, but if he's changed his, his appearance uh, at some point, um, is he right in front of him and they don't know it? What are the chances of that? I don't know. I, I think I think he's holed up somewhere, man. I, I think he's he's in an apartment somewhere, you know, or a house. He, he's with someone, you know, like like a safe house. Um, I th I mean, personally, I think the whole Carlton Reserve thing and, and his dad going there. I think that was a ruse. Yeah, I mean, they had enough time to plan that. So I think he's with a relative or he he's with a friend, you know, that his parents are in, in touch with. You know, I mean, they're probably being super careful about it now, but. You know, I, I do believe that he's close. I believe he's in Florida or, you know, a neighboring state. Well, based he's on very, very close. Seth, based on what you've seen and having been on the run, how important are allies? I mean, do you need people who are helping you along the way to stay in hiding? No, definitely, definitely you do. Because, I mean, the first thing you need, you need money. I mean, you need people to bring you stuff. That's why you see so many criminals when they get on the run. They're like so desperate. They're like robbing banks or stealing cars. And that's why they get caught. When you have allies, when you have resources, when you have money, when you have people that are willing to put you up, that's when you can stay on the run for longer. And that when, that's what makes life as a fugitive easier. Well, and you have to wonder, you're going to need some cash, at least in the initial time, to keep going. Um, you say you were relieved when you were caught. Why? Oh, because... You know, I, I was living under these alternate identities. It's like every day or every week I would I would change like IDs. Like it's one day I was this guy, one day I was this guy. And you know, I, I'm going out, I'm, I'm meeting people. I was a young man. So, you know, I needed, you know, the people, you know, I was a people person. So it was just hard to maintain that facade, you know, cause you got, you basically have to lie to everybody. 
you know, and that, that's just hard, you know, for, for me, the type of person I am, just to, you know, maintain that lie and maintain that facade, it, it was really hard. And, you know, even though I was doing it after two years, it, it took a toll on me. So when I did get caught, you know, I was relieved. You were relieved. Uh, it's certainly a much different time in terms of social media and attention that this case and the search for Brian Laundry is getting. Uh, what do you think? Do you think he's monitoring social media? He's monitoring the news so he can try to stay one step ahead? Oh, I'm, I'm sure he is. You know, I mean, if he's someplace and, and they got cable TV or they got, you know, streamers, I mean, he's probably watching all the stuff, you know. He might be watching us right now. You never know. And I'm sure he has a burner phone, you know, something, you know, that's not registered in his name. So if he does have to have any type of communications. Wow. Really interesting perspective, Seth. We appreciate your insight tonight. Thank you.